Hello Internet, it's me Josh, the Aging Gamer. So, I've reviewed a lot of retro Disney games on this channel, from games like Darkwing Duck and Rescue Rangers to movies like The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and The Lion King. Well, I got another retro review for you today that's based off of a TV show that's based off of a movie, but not at all. I'm talking about Tailspin. Tailspin is a spin-off of The Jungle Book and features some of its main characters, like Blue, King Louie, and Shere Khan. But this is not a story about animals taking a boy to a man village. This is about Baloo's failed air cargo freight business being bought out by Rebecca Cunningham, a strong independent woman and single mother. Along the way, Baloo meets up with an air gliding teenage cub named Kit Cloudkicker. Louie returns as a musical bartender. There's a dim-witted mechanical genius named Wildcat. And there's also deadly air pirates led by the show's antagonist, Don Carnage. It's also set in the late 1930s. What? That's very far off from the original Jungle Book concept, but it was a good show. I mean, I didn't enjoy it as much as, say, Darkwing Duck, Chippendale, and Goof Troop. Those shows were my jam. But I watched it, and my favorite part of the show was probably that catchy theme song. Oh, yeah. But as an NES game, is it any good? I mean, Capcom, Disney, NES games have a pretty good track record, but this game? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tailspin. So the game story isn't too far off from any episode of the show. Rebecca has some cargo for us to deliver, so we're gonna deliver it while also dealing with air pirate shenanigans. Let's go! So, hey, wait, what is this? That's Baloo in his plane, the Sea Duck, but that's not the Sea Duck from the cartoon. This is some weird mini version. He looks like a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. Well, anyway, as you can see, this game is a scrolling shooter. You can, of course, shoot using the B button and then the A button flips you upside down? It reverses the direction you can move towards, but only if you're on a horizontal playing field. I'm not sure why they made Balloon be upside down instead of just flipping his character sprite, but I guess it adds a bit of quirkiness to the game. Be careful though, because you can end up squishing yourself and dying. While you're flying through the levels, shooting bad guys and all that, there's various items for you to collect. Collecting fruit will give you more points, which will eventually lead to you getting extra lives. There's also money bags you want to keep your eyes open for. Also, if you collect all the cargo in a stage, you'll end up getting a perfect score, and in turn, getting more money at the end of the level. What's money good for? We'll get to that in a bit. If you shoot all around the stage, you'll find hidden items. You might even be lucky enough to find a bonus stage. When you enter, you'll play as Kit, and you'll glide around a short scrolling stage, collecting balloons as you go. Get as many balloons as you can, and you should get about two or three extra lives. Back to the level though, we're flying over the sea. There's some enemies around here, though these guys seem more like innocent bystanders just flying by. If you crash into them, you'll get hurt, because, well, why wouldn't you? They don't attack you or anything like that, but we'll kill them anyway. Along the way, we'll dodge cannons, surfers, and bubbles. Freaking bubbles! At the end, we'll have a boss fight with the submarine. It shoots missiles and cannonballs at you. Dodge and shoot its stupid little scope when it pops up, and it'll eventually die. So that was the end of the first level, and I gotta ask, who was I even delivering to? Was it was it the submarine? I mean, what did I deliver other than a can of whoop ass? That's weird. So, after a level is complete, you'll collect your earnings and then talk to Wildcat. He can fix up your Sea Duck with some upgrades, but at a price. You can upgrade your engine that'll make you move faster, armor that gives you an extra hit point, the rapid shot that'll shoot your cannon faster, and the super rapid shot that lets you shoot up to four shots at a time, instead of one. You can also buy more lives and continues. As for myself, I prefer upgrading my shooting power because shooting with just one cannon is just dreadful. So, Rebecca sends us to our next delivery, the baseball stadium. What? There's a game going on and I'm just gonna swoop in there like some kind of jerk and... Wait, what? Is this a giant baseball? I don't remember anything like this in the cartoon. We go through an underground passage and we eventually fight that giant baseball machine. Dodge and shoot. 
Again, I have to ask, who was I delivering to? The, the giant baseball? I mean, Rebecca doesn't say anything after we deliver these packages, she just sends us to our next mission. It's, it just seems very weird. Rebecca now sends us to deliver our next package in a lightning storm? Okay, this seems all very, very fishy. Like, I, I don't know if I'm just looking too much into this, but it seems like there's more going on than the game is telling us. In the lightning storm level, there's of course lightning bullshit to dodge. You also likely get killed by this mountain. I thought it was part of the background. The boss is two chumps from the cartoon. They'll shoot at you separately, but they'll occasionally shoot at you together. Shoot them enough times when they're together like that, and they'll die. Our next level is... a magic house that's... that's haunted? Okay, I truly think little Miss Rebecca Cunningham is trying to kill us. I mean, she doesn't even mention a package. She just says, fly your plane into a haunted house. That doesn't even make any sense. Usually spooky themed levels are my favorites in video games because I love that kind of stuff. But this haunted house level is my least favorite in the game. It's really freaking hard. You got chandeliers falling from the ceiling, ghosts that'll just go through solid objects and follow you, and we also got these damn hands that come out of the wall and will hurt you before you even realize what's happening! Ah! Pass all that though and we'll reach the end where our next boss is... a... Uh... I don't even know what this is. is. Is this a ghost? I mean, I did fight a giant baseball, so why not? But but this is a freaking paranormal entity with intentions on killing me. The boss isn't too hard. He moves in a certain way that makes it easy to get a shooting pattern down. Kill him and we move on to our next level, the city. I think it's illegal for us to fly through a city like this, but hey, Rebecca wants us to deliver those packages, so whatever. The level is just typical stuff you'd expect. The boss actually gave me some trouble though. At first it seems freaking impossible to beat, but I didn't realize you have to destroy this construction boss piece by piece. The first thing you want to do is destroy that wrecking ball, then start carefully shooting away at the rest of the machine to destroy it. Our next level is inside a cave. It's the least interesting level with the least interesting and least difficult boss. Yawn. After this we're in the jungle. Leaping lizards? There's leaping lizards. There's actually an entire tribe of crocodile people that want to hurt us. And the boss? Well, it's a giant crocodile, of course. In the final level, we're in the snowy Alps. We'll have a boss fight with Don Canage. He's all over the place, which could be a bit intimidating, but if you keep to the lower corner, you should be able to beat him a lot easier. But he's not the final boss. It's actually Carnage's flying fortress, the Iron Vulture. Destroy it piece by piece while also dodging and destroying missiles and enemies. Destroy the propellers, and then the engine, and you'll win. In the end, we see Shere Khan being angry with Don Carnage, and he claims that he'll eventually acquire the company sooner or later. Wait, so Shere Khan wants to take over the freight business, hire for hire? This all makes sense now! Rebecca had us going out on a bunch of deliveries in outlandish places, knowing full well that Blue would be going through extremely dangerous areas and could possibly die. What if Rebecca's plan this whole time was to team with Khan and kill Blue? But, but why? Is it possible that Blue still has enough shares in the company that would prevent Rebecca from letting the company get bought out? To get the company sold, Rebecca and Khan planned on killing Blue so he wouldn't have a say in the sale. This has to be the motives behind this game, right? Right? Or, or maybe it's just a fun Disney game for, for the NES, and I'm just thinking too much on it. <laughs> We also see Baloo say, today's problems must have been Khan's doing. Wait, all of this happened in one day? Baloo says he's the best pilot in the world, and the game ends. So that's Tailspin for the NES. So, how is it? Well, I'm a bit indifferent to be honest. I think my overall feelings about this game are the same about the show in general. It's not bad, but it's not really great either. I can't really think of anything I truly find wrong with the game, but at the same time, I can't find anything that makes the game special to me, other than nostalgia. The gameplay is decent, and I like the upgrade option for your plane. The music is not too shabby, and the visuals are decent. I'm a bit disappointed that the characters feel so bland, though. I mean, I can't imagine how they can make Blue more expressive while riding his plane, but he's only got one sprite in the game, and it's just flipped in different directions. Unless you count his death animation. I also find the level designs to be... 
rather boring. I think some of the bosses are a bit more difficult than necessary too. Overall, the game leans more towards the harder side, but it's also got some fun extra challenges to it, like trying to find all the secret bonus levels and collecting all the cargo for the bonus payout. But... This game just doesn't do it for me either way. I feel like it's the weakest of the Disney Afternoon Bunch. It's not bad whatsoever, but I don't feel like you'll be missing out much if you skip it. But these are just my opinions. What do you think? What do you think of Tailspin? You love it? You hate it? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, you can do that too. I don't mind at all. And like always, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.